want to invite all the kids to come up and get a coloring page if you want to color. I even like to color, so even if you're older than a child's age, you're welcome to color. But there's, there's Mother's Day coloring pages, so come on up and get one. There's different ones. There's Best Mom Ever. Don't be shy. Happy Mother's Day, don't be shy. And another Happy Mother's Day. There's some Happy Mother's Day or Happy Nan, uh, Best, Nana. Best, Best Nana, Nana Ever, Best Grandmother. So you can grab some crayons and some coloring pages and color. Now I'm going to take a moment while I'm speaking and I'm going to ask you to show your pictures too. So do your best coloring for your mom today and then you can show off your pictures as well. Now when I ask you to show your pictures, kids, I'm going to ask you to tell us one wonderful thing that one wonderful thing that you love about your mother. Okay? So be thinking about that too. So happy Mother's Day to everyone. It's a beautiful Mother's Day. It's great to be here today. As you can see, we have our beautiful children with us, and I'll, I'll tell you more about them as we go. But everyone here either is a mother or knows a mother, right? Mom. This is Navy. Mom, I want to, I want to, I want to stay with you. There you go. That's perfect. So this is Nathaniel. So, but everyone here today either is a mother or knows a mother. So I, I want to encourage you to let the Lord speak to you through this message, whether it's to apply it to your own life or to, or to encourage the mothers who are around you. Because all of us have mothers in our lives, and it's a blessing to be a mom, and it's a blessing to have mothers around us. So, so be encouraged by that. I myself waited a long time to be a mother. I, um, I went to Africa as a single missionary. You know, when I was young, I wanted to be a mom. Ever since I was young, I thought, I want to have a family one day. I want to be a mom. And I was like the babysitter in town, you know, so people, parents would call me up to come and watch their kids. I was always babysitting kids and, and working with children. And I would do children's ministry at church. And, and then even when I went to Africa as a missionary, you know, how many know that, that in Proverbs 69 it says that the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps, right? So in my mind, I thought, you know, I'll go to be a missionary in Africa with a family one day, you know. And, and the Lord sort of had a different plan in that. I went as a single missionary, but still in Africa, I was working with the children. We started um, a feeding program for malnourished babies, so... So I was working with the youth at several different churches, and I was at this one uh, church in particular. It was in um, a little shanty town. It was called Ombili. We lived, I lived in a town uh, called Ochirongo in Namibia in southern Africa. And Ombili was uh, a section of the shanty town. So shanty towns are basically where people would put together houses made out of scraps of metal or wood or whatever they could find to put together. And so, so Ombili, we had a church out in Ombili, and there, the pastor was preaching, and I was sitting there in, in church, and we were standing up to worship, and this lady came in, this I, very young lady, she was a very young mother, came in with her baby who was about 14 months old or so, and she only weighed about 12 pounds. Now, my little baby's about five months and she weighed more than 12 pounds. She was a very, very tiny, <coughs> tiny little little girl. And and so the Lord spoke to my heart even while I was there, and I thought, if I, if I don't do something now, this child might not make it. So I left, you know, and I went to the store and I got formula milk, and, and the pastor's wife worked with me to translate to be able to, you know, teach the mom and how to feed this baby. And so we started a feeding program to help malnourished babies there in the movie Africa. So we would feed them, and we would, you know, take take food to them, and you know, talk to their moms and see how they were doing. And it's neat to see the the, the progress and how the the children were doing well after that. So so, um, and I would I would often go also into the the hospitals. That was one of my favorite things to do to go into the hospital into the children's ward. And the children's ward was a small. It was maybe about the size of this this church. And it had four different rooms, and they had the malnourished babies room, and that uh, you know, where children would be who were burned and different things from 
uh, from fires, because they would cook over fires, and sometimes the kids would stumble and fall into the fires, different things like that, or the diarrhea room, or you know, whatever the sick you know, kids had, they kind of grouped in that way. So I would go in and pray for the children. And so even through all this, the Lord you know, put in my heart that desire to reach out to the, to the needs of the children. And, and I think the Lord does that for us women. And for, for uh, the young girls especially, the, the Lord puts in us that compassion and that, that heart to reach out to those who are in need around us. So, but you know, even as a missionary in Africa, I, I had this dream to be a wife and a mom one day. And sometimes I would try to deny it and say, okay, it's me and Jesus, we can do this. You know, we're, you know I was doing the Lord's work and I loved life in Africa. But the Lord spoke to my heart. I, I remember exactly where I was. I was going for a run one day, and I was on this one side street in, in Ocho Adolfo, in Namibia, and the Lord spoke to my heart that being a wife and a mom is a calling. Just as much as being a missionary to Africa is a calling, being a wife and a mom is a calling. And it's a calling and it's a mission that, that women have to be a wife and a mom. And so instead of trying to, to deny it or think, you know, this isn't, you know, this is what God has for me, and, and maybe that's not what God, you know. The Lord spoke to my heart that I need to embrace that. And so I began to pray in that way. And I began to pray more for a husband and pray more for a family. And then the Lord's blessings came in that way. So I came home from Africa. I was 29 when I came back. And I was praying and praying, and I waited about a year or so. I was working. And, you know, I, I made decisions that would line myself up for being a wife and a mom. At first, I thought, well, you know, when I came back from Africa, I thought, well, now what should I do, you know? And I start, decided to go into the medical field, and I was pursuing that, and I, I went to, like, a pre-med program, and I was partway into that, and I thought to myself, well, really, I think the Lord was helping me figure it out, <laughs> but, but I thought to myself, how, how can I be in the middle of, of medical school and raise my own kids? That's not going to work, you know? So I dropped out of, of the pre-med program. So this is, like major walk of faith, you know, because it's life-altering decisions here. And, and then a year, about a year after I got home from Africa, I met Jeffrey, and we met and married in three months. So God brought us together, and he had seen me speak previously when I was raising my support to be a missionary in Africa. And I was speaking at his church, and then five years later, he found me on Facebook. The, the rest is history. So, so we met and married in three months, and we began our beautiful family. And um, we have Eliana, and her name means the Lord has responded or God has answered. And so as you can see, she is an answer to many, many years of prayer. Our oldest son is Samuel, and he, his name also means heard by God. Like when Hannah was praying for her for son, and the Lord blessed her with a son. So... He was born in South Africa, so we went back to Africa as missionaries uh, when he was when I was expecting him, and and we just stayed for a short time. Uh, at that stage, we had trouble with our work permit and things like that, so we ended up coming back. And then we were uh, on a move to Las Vegas, and we were expecting at that time too, and we lost our baby. So it was a very very hard time in our lives. So, um, but we named our baby Taipa, and I have a necklace with Taipa's name on it, and that means that, that's a Hebrew name meaning hope. And so we know that we have the hope of seeing our baby in heaven one day. And then we have Ezekiel, he's our rainbow baby, he's our five-year-old, and his name means God strengthens, because God strengthens us even through those hard times, right? The hard times in life, we all go through them, and God gives us strength. And then we have Nathaniel, who's our three-year-old, and he, his name means gift of God. And uh, as I was praying for him, I just kept thanking the Lord for this wonderful gift, because he is such a gift, and, and children are a gift from the Lord. And then Jaina, our littlest, she's five months. Jaina means God is gracious, and God is truly gracious to bless us with the children we have in his name. So being a mother is a beautiful thing, and being a mother is hard. Right? It's hard work. It's a lot of work. It's challenging. You go through a lot. You know, when I, when I was expecting my first war, and I was so excited and, you know, anticip the anticipation of a new child coming. And then after the baby's born, then all the decisions hit, right? Like you have to make these decisions and you have to, there's all these things to uh, decide on how to raise your child, right? If only, if only we could just love them and everything would be okay, right? <laughs> because we can love our children. But yet there's life and there's decisions and challenges and the kids go through things and we go through things and we really need the grace of God, don't we? 
We need the grace of God to sustain us through, through the hard times in life. And sometimes as mothers, we look at other moms and sometimes we compare ourselves to them, sadly. We shouldn't do that, right? But sometimes that happens. We look at other moms and think, wow, they really have it all together. Or, wow, how does a mom do that? She likes fixes five course meals. Or, you know, that mom's house is so clean. How do they do that? You know? And we compare ourselves to other, other moms and, and then we start to feel down on ourselves. Or we might feel inadequate or we might feel like we don't measure up. But I want to encourage you today. Don't compare yourself to other people because you, mom, are enough. And God is going to give you the wisdom you need for raising your children or for, for encouraging your grandchildren or whatever it might be. So I looked up um, on salary.com. It was talking about the roles of a mother. And, if, and they, they, the people at, uh, from this organization interviewed 19,000 plus women to find out the roles that they play in motherhood and to estimate their value or their worth monetarily as if they were going to get a salary. And the average stay-at-home mom, if they were paid for all the work that they do, would get $184,000 per year. <laughs> so that's quite, a, that's quite a job, right? Now, unfortunately, I don't have that money to give you today. <laughs> but, but a mother, on average, works 106 hours a week, which is 15-hour days. Now, those of us with little ones, I would say we probably work more hours per day than that, right? But the, the hats that moms wear, chief financial officer, chief operating officer, logistics analysis, housekeeper, laundry manager, van driver, school teacher, facilities manager, meeting event planner, kitchen manager, assistant athletics director, staff nurse, bookkeeper, physical therapy, supervisor, nutrition director, consumer loan officer, fast food cook, who's mastered that, gotta whip up something really fast, right? Server, conflicts manager, interior designer, fundraising coordinator, right? Like all these things that we do as moms. And mom, we thank you. We want to honor you today and we want to encourage you today that you are enough. The work that you do for the Lord is not, it does not go in vain. Because whenever we serve the Lord and whenever we uh, serve our families, God sees that and he is pleased. So we want, to, we want this message to encourage you today. Now sometimes when we talk about motherhood and we think about, some of us think about maybe the ways that we've failed or how we've, you know, messed up in a certain area or how, you know, we should have done this as a mom or we should have done that as a mom. I want to encourage you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? There's no condemnation. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are not condemned. Allow the Lord to minister to you today. And allow the Lord to encourage you to, to walk forth in the purpose and in the plans that he has for you. Because he has good things ahead. And the enemy is the one that would want us to be stuck in our past, right? The enemy would want us to be discouraged and think, oh, I'll never mess it, measure up. Look at how I failed in my past. Look at the things that have happened to me. And I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to be able to, you know. Those are lies of the enemy. The enemy has, comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? And he tries to um, uh, condemn us. But condemnation is not of God. When we are walking with the Lord, he leads us on to new things. There's a new day coming. There's, there's good things in our future, right? And so I want to encourage you to press on to what God has for you through the future. Because there is nothing like a mother's love, right? So I'm going to read you a book. Before I do this, how are the, how are the pictures coming, kids? How are they coloring? Anybody done theirs yet? Wow, that's beautiful. Are you done yours yet? Who's done? <laughs> Are you done? Anyone? No? Still coloring? Okay, when I'll, I'll stop again. Are you done? You, oh, yeah, come and show your picture. Come on up here. Oh, you don't want to show your picture? Do you want to come show your picture? You can come show your picture. You want to come and show it? It's beautiful. Your mom's going to love it. Yes. Do you want to tell us something that you love about your mom? Oh, that's so great. Mom hugs are the best, aren't they? That's so great. Okay, so I'm going to read a book to you. And kids, you'll probably enjoy this book. This is a book called Love You Forever. Has anybody read this book? And here's a spoiler alert. I never make it to this book without crying. So, <laughs> so be prepared. But this is a great book talking about a mother's love. So, a mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 
And while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The baby grew, he grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old and he ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelves, he pulled all the food out of the refrigerator, and he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at night, when the two-year-old was quiet, she would open the door to his room, crawl across the floor, and look up over the side of the bed. And if he was really asleep, she would pick him up and rock him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The little boy grew, and he grew, and he grew. He grew until he was nine years old, and he never wanted to come in for dinner. And he, wanted, and he never wanted to take it back. And when his grandma visited, he always said bad things. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. <laughs> but at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up on the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked, him, picked up that nine-year-old boy and rocked, rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, <laughs> she said, I love you forever, forever. I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby will be. The boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a teenager. And he had strange friends and he wore strange clothes and he listened to strange music. Sometimes his mother felt like she was in a zoo. But at nighttime, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the other side of the bed. And if he was really asleep, he would pick, she, she would pick him up, and she, would, she picked up that great big boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And while she rocked, she said, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby will be. The teenager grew and he grew and he grew, and he grew until he was a grown-up man, and he left home and got a house across town. But sometimes, on dark nights, the mother got into her car and drove across town. If all the lights in her son's house were out, she opened the bedroom, door, the bedroom window, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of the bed. If that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she said, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby will be. Well, that mother, she got older, and she got older and older, and one day she came up, her, she called up her son and said, you better come and see me because I'm old and sick. When he came in the door, she cried. And she tried to sing the song. She sang, "I love you forever. I like you for always." But she couldn't finish because she was too old and too sick. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and he sang, "I love you forever. I like you for always, as long as I'm." He stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went up to the room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He picked her up on it in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, he sang, I love you forever. I like you for always, as long as I'm living. My baby will be. The end. Wow. <laughs> so, so be encouraged, moms. Your love, and your love for your children, is seen and it's understood. And sometimes we might not see the results in the moment, but God sees them. And most importantly, He's He's pleased with you, and your and your children see it too. So God bless you with that. So, as we draw my eyes, <laughs> so don't compare yourselves to other moms. Don't compare yourselves to what the world thinks should be a great mom. Just live your life before the Lord. Live your life before him wholeheartedly and let him use you to be a blessing to your children, to be a blessing to your families, to be a blessing to your grandchildren and your nieces and nephews and the neighbor down the street who needs, who needs another mother, right? So allow the Lord you, use you. And in the, in, in the recent, um, more recent weeks, you know, the Lord has really been speaking to my heart about the mission of motherhood. 
how we are on a mission from God. And you think, you know, I have five children. Of course I would, you know, realize my mission from the Lord. But it's really, you know, sometimes throughout life we know things in our head, right? And then there are certain points in our life where it really sinks into our hearts, right? And the Lord has really been sinking that truth into my heart lately, that, that motherhood is a mission, that being a wife and a mom is a mission from God. And so I want to encourage you with the mission from God, the mission that God has for us today. It's, and the mission, first of all, is our children, right? Our children, whether it's our children or our grandchildren, our nieces or nephews, or our friends who have children, the children around us are the mission. And Isaiah 127, 3 says, I'm sorry, Psalm 127, 3 says, Behold, children are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Our children are, are, are a blessing and a gift and a, and a reward from God. In Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16, it says, For you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all, were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was one of them to be. So we are part of the ordained days of our children. Isn't that amazing? God has, has uh, God, the Bible says that God knit, knits our children together in our womb. God formed them and created them and has ordained their days. And we are part of those days that have been ordained by God. In 2 Timothy, Paul is writing to his, Timothy, his son in the faith, and he says in verse 1-5, For I am mindful of the sincere faith that first, that, that the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am sure that is in you as well. So God uh, has even, uh, Paul even recognized in Timothy the faith that was seen in his grandmother and in his mother. Isn't that beautiful? In Matthew 19, 14, this is one of my favorite verses. It's on the back of my necklace uh, where, where I remember our type of. And Matthew 19, 14, but Jesus said, Let the children alone, and do not hinder them from coming to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. God has blessed us with our children. God has blessed us to be among children. And let us see them as a mission from the Lord, because each one of us have that mission, whether we're a mom or an auntie or a grandmother. Or... And so be encouraged in the mission that God has for us. So did any of you kids finish your drawing yet? Anyone else? I'm do you want to share dead. yours? Do you want to come up and show it? Let's see your picture. Let's see. Uh, let's see if you want to turn it around and hold it up so everyone can see it. Happy Mother's Day. Wonderful. Do you want to tell us something you love about your mom? That she takes care of me. Yes. Mothers take the best care of us, don't they? Yes. And I invited a heart, and I said, I love you, Mom. Oh, that's so wonderful. She is going to love that. That's perfect. And yours, too. Do you want to turn it around to show everyone? There. <laughs> wow. Yes. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. You two may go sit down again. Good job. Okay. So that's our... The, the mission that we have is our children, right? And, and I want to encourage you to, to continue to find value in that. You know, sometimes as the saying goes, that the, the days are long, but the years are short. And as we grow older, the years seem to go faster, don't they? And so I want to encourage you to value the time that you have and, and soak in the time that you have. A lot of times, now, I'm, now I, as... As I uh, explained, I'm an older mother, <laughs> so so we met married when we were 30, and then we had all our kids. So so before you have to try to figure out the math, I am 42 now, <laughs> and we have our our uh, five five month old. So I'm an older mother, but you know with that comes a lot more you, you know a change in perspective and some more wisdom. At least I would hope, <laughs> and more wisdom with with the years that I've I've been waiting to be a mom and. And a lot of times I'll see new mothers and they, and they get worried or anxious about certain things. And I try to encourage them and say, don't worry. Time goes so fast, doesn't it? 
all of us who, who are, you know, uh, having kids that are growing up now, the time goes so fast. So, the ministry that we have. So, we see that mission is our children. Now, the ministry that we have to them is to, is to train them in godliness, right? So, Paul also wrote this to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 7 through 12. He says, but have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is, a, is only of a little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things. Since, it's, since it, holds promise, uh, it, it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. And so we want to train our children in godliness, in godly living, right? We want to tra tra train them to serve the Lord and teach them the things of God. Think about it. Who do we want teaching our children? Do we, want do we want us teaching them? Do we want us teaching them the word of God? Or do we want things like, like YouTube or Disney or things that, uh, you know, uh, the secular humanistic uh, teachings that we hear in our society? We have the obligation and the ministry and the mission as mothers and as families to, to train our children in the fear and admonition, admonition of the Lord and to raise them up to be people of God. In Luke chapter 6, it talks about what we can teach them. Teachings of Jesus. In Luke chapter chapter 6, Jesus taught these things. And they're, they basically go, in, they go contrary to the ways of the world. And as I read this, you'll think, this certainly doesn't sound like what we hear in, our, in, in the world. It's, it, it's contrary to the way the world teaches us. But this is what we are to teach our children. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. And that's different, isn't it? You know, in the world we see people fighting and, and uh, uh, complaining and hurting each other, right? Well, here we're supposed to teach our kids the exact opposite. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the treat, cheek, offer him. The other also, and whoever takes away your coat, do not hold with, withhold your shirt from him either. Give to everyone who asks you, and whoever takes away what is yours, do not demand it back. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you, and if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. But if, if, but if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners in order to receive back the same amount. But love your enemies, and do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. So these are the things that we teach our children, right? We teach them the ways of God. We teach them the ways and the truths of God's word, and not the ways of the world. In Titus chapter 2, I love this scripture because it, 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 it uh, encapsulates, it shows us the role that each one of us have. From older women to younger women, we, we each have a role to play in the lives of the children around us. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips or enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good. And that is, that is key. You know, sometimes, um, you know, we hear about uh, a, lot, a lot of times people being gossips or people, you know, talking a lot. And, and the scripture specifically talks many times about not being gossips, right? And in, in the Bible, it even has gossips or being gossipers listed in the same verses as, the same verses God haters. Because gossiping destroys and gossiping tears down. And there's no purpose for that. We have much more of a mission to do, right? We, we don't have time to, um, to busy ourselves with things like gossip and, and pulling people down. We have a mission from God to stir people up and stir people and encourage people on in the things of God. So likewise, be reverent in your behavior, not malicious gossips or enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good. So instead of gossiping, teach what is good. You have a mission so that they may encourage the young women so, so this is how the older women are supposed to encourage. It says, the older women are supposed to encourage the younger women to love your husbands and to love your children. How beautiful is that? Because how many know we need encouragement to love? Loving is not always easy, right? Because it takes crucifying our flesh and then crucifying our own passions and desires. 
to sacrificially love those who are around us, right? So older women are to train the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, to be subject to their own husbands so that the word of God may not be dishonored. Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible and in all things show yourself to be an example of good deeds with purity and doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach, so that the opponent will be put to shame, having nothing bad to say about us. For the grace of God has appeared. We do it all by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> because we can't do any of this in our own strength. We all struggle with these things. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly and to live righteously and godly in this present age. How many know that's not easy? There's a lot, there's a lot of uh, opposition towards us living godly lives, right, in this day and age. But God says, and he says through his word, for the grace of God has appeared, bring salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. We need to be zealous for the work that God has for us to do. Not to be distracted by all the, the mundane things and, and the, uh, the gossiping and the uh, backbiting and the you know, harm, harmful things, but to put all that aside and move on in the, in the amazing mission that God has for us. To be zealous for good deeds. These things speak and exhort and reprove with all authority. Let no one disregard you. So ladies, we have this encouragement from the word of God to teach and to train those who come after us, to teach them and train them in how to love their husbands and how to love their children and how to, to see it as a mission for, for us to teach those who come after us. And so I want to encourage you with that today. And then in Deuteronomy chapter 6, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, this is what the Israelites would teach their children. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might, these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and talk about them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. So always be talking about the things of God. Right? You shall bind them as signs on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house, and on your gates. You can see how... How God takes it very seriously, the instruction and the training in godliness that we need to have for our children. Psalm 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We need to teach our children the word of God and train them in the things of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So any other kids? Do you have any other kids? <coughs> Make sure I'm you're, almost done. you're almost done. Anyone want to show yours? Not yet? Okay, we'll come back to that. Very good. So, we see that children are our mission, right? Children, whether it's your children or your grandchildren or your nieces or your nephews or your neighbors down the street, the children that God has put in our lives are the mission that he has for us to train in godliness, to teach them how to walk in the fear of the Lord. Because there's so many voices in the world today, aren't there? There's so much going on around, you know, from back in the day, I mean, even when... Uh, you know, we talk to our kids, you know, there's a lot of devices and a lot of electronics and TV and, and phones and things, you know. Back in the day when, when we were kids, we didn't have those things. Sometimes we'll tell our kids, when we were, when we drove down, in, down, you know, went on a long trip, we were playing games, watching, you know, things go by out the window, looking at the license plate, seeing, you know, how many Fords there are compared to how many Chevys there are. We played all these car games, you know. <laughs> so there's a lot of downtime back in the day. Now the kids are bombarded with constant stimulation. You know, there's always things coming at them. And so we have the responsibility to teach and train them in the ways of God so that they can follow in the ways of God and not be distracted or harmed by the ways of the world. And so how do we do this? You know, it's a big job ahead of us, isn't it? It's a big job that we have to do. It's a big mission that God has for us. And whether, whether you're 20 or whether you're 80, God has this mission ahead of us. And how do we do it? How do we, how do we walk forward as women, as mothers, as people who influence the children around us? 
We do it at, by, by walking in the fear of God and by crucifying our flesh and by walking by the Spirit. So in Proverbs 31, so we, a lot of times we'll hear about the Proverbs 31 woman, right? And we think, well, how in the world? You know, I don't measure up to that. But the, the, in Proverbs 31, verse 30, it says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but the woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. In Ecclesiastes 12, it says, Fear God and keep his commandments. Because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act to judgment, every, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. So we are instructed to fear God. And when we fear God, then he helps us to walk in his ways. When we have honor and reverence for the Lord, he helps us to do what it is that he has called us to do. We care less about what man thinks and more about what God thinks. That's the key about fearing the Lord. We, we honor him, we reverence him, we serve him wholeheartedly. And then the things of the world will grow strangely dim, as the song says, right? Because the things of the world will matter much, much less when we fear the Lord and when we walk in his ways. Galatians 5. This is, I think, a key scripture for us uh, as mothers. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For those are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. And so sometimes, you know, sometimes even as mothers, our, our fleshly desires might well up, you know. And, and it might not be necessarily bad things, you know. Sometimes, you know, we want more sleep. Or sometimes we want, you know, to be able to have some peace and quiet. Or to be able to go, you know, shopping or whatever it might be. Those aren't necessarily bad things. But sometimes we still have to crucify our flesh and our own passions and desires to be able to put in, uh, to, to be able to put first those who are around us. To put first our children and our husbands and the people that we love. And so sometimes it takes, it takes a setting aside of our desires to be able to do those things. And how do we do that? By following the Lord and by walking by the Spirit, right? So crucifying our flesh and our own passions and desires and walking by the Spirit. So, but if you are led by the Spirit, this is Galatians 5.18. If you are led by the Spirit and are not under the law, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are... Immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. Of which I forewarn you, just as I forewarn you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's pretty strong language. God's serious about that. People who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But when you walk by the Spirit... The fruit of the Spirit are these things. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How many think of mom when you hear of those things? I think of my mother. She, she exhibits a lot of those virtues and a lot of the fruits of the Spirit. And, of the Spirit. and we're, not, we're not perfect by any means, are we moms? <laughs> but that's what we strive to, to do, right? We strive to be loving. We strive to be joyful. We strive to have, be, have peace and patience and all of these fruits of the Spirit. And how do we have it? By crucifying our flesh and by walking by the Spirit. And we may not be perfect, but we thank God for the great, His grace, right? And He cleanses us and He washes us and makes us clean. And thank God that His mercies are new every morning and great is His faithfulness. So to put on the full, the, the, uh, to, to crucify our flesh and walk by the Spirit Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. But let's encourage one another in these things. So mom, if you see another mom struggling, if you see another mom who's discouraged, come alongside and encourage her. Put your arm around her and say, you got this. It's, it's challenging, it's hard, but you can do it, right? We all need those encourage, encouragements from time to time. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us in offering a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality and impurity or greed must not be named among you as, pro as is proper among saints. And there must be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather give thanks. 
For this you know with certainty that no immoral, impure person or covetous man or an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. But instead, in Hebrews chapter 12, so here we have in Hebrews 11 is the Hall of Faith. You know the great Hall of Faith chapter where it talks about the amazing people of faith? Then in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, it says, Therefore, since we have a great cloud of witnesses, these people who have gone before us, the great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside the encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Right, now imagine I were going to go run a marathon, and I start out, and I pick up like a 50-pound backpack, and I put it on, and I strap the weights on my legs, and, and I'm about to run a marathon. Would that make sense? No. It would not make any sense at all. In this race of life, throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles us. It's not worth it. Get rid of it. Anything that hinders you in this, in this mission that God has for you to to raise your children and encourage your grandchildren and however however the Lord has you on this mission of motherhood, get get rid of any encumbrance and any sin that would entangle you because our race is for the Lord. So lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race for the race that is set before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith, for the joy set before, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Do not grow weary, moms. Keep going, because your mission is vital. We are raising the next generation of, of people to walk for the Lord. And who knows, maybe... The, the child you are encouraging in the things of God, maybe that child will be the next Billy Graham. Or maybe that child will be the next missionary to Africa. Or maybe that child will be the next one who, who reaches the, the family down the street who then becomes the family that goes. You know, we will never know the full extent of the work that we do till we get to heaven. You know that? Hmm. We will never see the full results of our prayers until we get to heaven. We'll never see the full result of the lives we touch until we get to heaven. And it is at that point where God will look at us and say, well done, and see all the, the blessings of, of the fruits of our labor, right? And so I want to encourage you today with that. And, you know, sometimes as mothers, we can be anxious. Any moms here ever have anxiety or a little stressed out about what's happening or worried about your children as they're going up? I want to encourage you with Philippians chapter 4. So Philippians 4, this was a prison epistle. So Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians while he was in prison. Imagine, he was writing this, these amazing truths while he was in prison. And he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, God's peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts, and will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? So, do not be anxious, but be encouraged to walk forward in this mission of motherhood, in this mission of training and raising our children in the things of God, that his name may be glorified, and that he may be exalted. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, kids, anybody else want to show you a picture? I do. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> My mom makes the best food I could ever have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else want to show your picture? Okay, come on up. Oh, you got one? Did you want Gracie? Yeah, do you want to come up and show another one? That's so great. Do you want to hold it up? Thank you. Anybody else want to show? Okay. Well, I was 
so I just want to encourage you, mothers, and as as we go, can I say a prayer for all the mothers, Absolutely. Pastor? Okay, so um, let's pray, and I just pray that the Lord will bless you today. And as you go and spend time with your spend time with your families and your children, Lord, we we thank you so much for the blessing of being mothers. We thank you for the blessing of the mission of motherhood and how you have given our children to us as as a mission to encourage and to train and to uplift and inspire in the things of God. And Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us to take this mission seriously, Lord, to lay off every encumbrance and the sin and the things that could easily entangle us, to set those aside so that we may walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh, that we may um, have the fruit of the Spirit seen in our lives. Lord, I pray that you would help us with that, Lord God, and that you would help us to honor you, to bring glory and honor to your holy name. I pray a special blessing upon each mother here. I pray a special blessing upon their lives. And I pray that you would work in them, that you would strengthen them, that you would encourage them, and that you would bless them in this mission that you have called us to do. We thank you and we love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name.